Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back at Reju Rejuvenate 2021, edition one. And we've got Teddy Slavcheva today uh, together with us. And I understand that she's actually currently in Cyprus, but otherwise she's usually based in uh, Oslo, Norway. Uh, but originally she's from Bulgaria. I will leave that storytelling to her in a short while, but just to very briefly uh, introduce Teddy to everyone. She's the CEO of Inopi, a startup that is looking to help recycle plastic waste in a, into a circular and sustainable solution. Uh, besides that, she's also a multi-talented entrepreneur, which I will not share more. I will let Teddy speak to us. Teddy, welcome to Rejuvenate 2021 Edition 1. Thank you for, for spending time with us. How are you? I'm very well, uh, Andrew. Thank you so much for the invitation. Really happy to, to join everyone today and to say hello. <laughs> It, it, it looks like beautiful weather over there in, in Cyprus. I, I mean, I see the palm trees, the blue skies. It, it, it's, it's almost as if you are right next to me in Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's really it's amazing uh, weather. Very, very inspiring for, for working and get some energy. Um, That's nice. I, especially after uh, spending uh, the year during the lockdown in, in Oslo, of course, uh, uh, it, the weather is it's more north, so it's not always so sunny and nice. So it's nice to come here a little bit and to, to charge for the summer. So yeah, it's a, it's a great, great day today here. For, for the benefit of the viewers here in Malaysia, who is Teddy Slavcheva? Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat? For, for the benefit of our viewers here in Malaysia, could you introduce who Teddy Slavcheva is? Yeah, of course. So you already made a brief introduction, but I will be happy to share a little bit more uh, about uh, me and my work. So I'm originally from Bulgaria, have been living in Norway in the last nine years, traveling quite a lot uh, before the lockdown in Europe. Um, and I'm working in the area of sustainability. As you already mentioned, uh, I'm a CEO of a startup called Inupi, based in, in Norway. And we're working on developing uh, products from uh, recycled plastics with the use of latest technologies and smart design solutions. My latest project also, very interesting, is uh, called uh, So uh, Brand and So Magazine. It's a global digital media about sustainability. And uh, we are aiming to bring content and also to bring awareness on the topics related to sustainability. Uh, it's again find, founded in Norway, in Stavanger, with two wonderful women, Sineva and Steve. And um, I'm also quite involved in the, uh, lowering the gender gap in tech. That's something what I'm very passionate about. So I work in an organization, non-profit organization called Women in Tech Oslo. Um, and also, I'm a global ambassador for Women Tech Global Network. Uh, this is basically what the activities which I'm at the moment uh, um, occupied with. Uh, but I also have background in the fashion industry, also creative industries like music. So I, I like to combine uh, different uh, skills and different industries and to create new stuff and uh, also quite... Uh, focused at the moment on bringing some impact. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about myself briefly. Teddy, you, you, it seems like you have got more than 24 hours in a day. <laughs> yeah, I know it seems so. It's a, it's a bit crazy sometimes. <laughs> but um, and, uh, yeah, I, I managed so, so far. <laughs> And uh, I'm a person that when you have uh, one thing, uh, working on one thing, and then another thing kind of uh, charge from one to another and contribute to each other. I often hear that um, people say that you should focus on one thing and 
just develop one thing. But for me personally, I think trying and it's working really well when I have a few projects running. And then, of course, you have to manage to uh, with the time and to coordinate and to have a good organization of skills of your time management. But um, yeah, overall, it's, it's going well. Sometimes can be a bit very busy. So, uh, but uh, but at the end, uh, I'm I'm very happy when there is a progress and when my visions and my ideas turn into life. So, yeah. <laughs> you're so multi-talented, multi-faceted. You know, from from uh, being a CEO of a sustainability uh, startup to to having your own magazine, digital magazine in in Oslo volunteering your time in uh, a non-profit and then you are involved in uh, fashion and and you are a singer and an artist wow i mean i'm i'm sure a, a lot of people look up to you as, as a as as a you know inspiration in in, in terms of uh, what you do and and i'm sure your your voice is 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 heard throughout the the at, at least throughout the European region, you know, and, and we are so blessed today to, to have you today at the show. Uh, just, just very quickly, could you tell us what InnoP is, um, you know, what, what, what does it do, what does it hope to achieve, and, and how did it came about? Yes, of course, I would be really happy to share. Uh, it's a really, really exciting project and uh, company. Uh, we found it uh, last summer, actually, during uh, COVID. And um, the idea was to develop products from recycled plastic to contribute to the circular economy. So I met uh, my amazing uh, co-founder, Ali and uh, Shashi. And um, we created, I think, great team. And for a couple of months, we managed to develop uh, quite well the organization. We are part of the... Um, business cluster, uh, uh, Aquatech business cluster, which is the biggest uh, uh, business cluster about uh, uh, fish production, actually, because our solutions also potentially could be used for these industries as well when it comes to use of recycled plastics. And uh, we are also in communication with uh, Tintef, which is the biggest uh, research organization in the Nordics for some research and development when it comes to um, to material and also we had initially with some AI development as well, some conversations. And um, at the moment, uh, we are having a project for uh, developing ur uh, ur urban agricultural development, which is uh, funded by also a municipality and uh, another uh, organization. Um, the idea is to develop DOME which is going to be sustainable with vertical farming. It's like a product which potentially could be bring in the city and also spread around and just contribute to making the city more green and sustainable. And also uh, when it comes to uh, uh, food production and uh, uh, contributing both use of recycled plastics and also um, ur urban agriculture. So it's quite exciting project. And we also have another very, very exciting project, which is called Domus Futura. We could probably upload afterwards the video, or maybe some of the people which have checked our Facebook um, page or our, our channels uh, have seen it. It's a building which is also from sustainable products, uh, sustainable materials and recycled materials. And it has innovative design and it will include, again, uh, vertical gardens and um, uh, aquaponic systems and uh, uh, also uh, fish tanks as well. Um, and the first uh, direction of this uh, pro uh, project is for, um, Oslo, for developing a center for uh, sustainability and innovation. We had also interest from the real estate industry, so it could be developed also potentially as a house as well. So um, the idea is really to um, look of opportunities to use um, waste and transform waste into valuable materials uh, and to create something new and sustainable uh, from this waste because we all know that uh, it's uh, really a huge amount of waste which is produced every day um, around the globe. 
and uh, instead of producing new and new virgin plastics and other materials, we have to look avoid how to use this uh, already uh, produced and something what we just throw in the nature and um, how to, to make good use of it. So that's the direction. But of course, we also look into how to uh, overcome some of the challenges coming with uh, recycling this waste because there also has some challenges uh, related to how sustainable it is. People that mm -hmm. work in this area know very well that there is some challenges and also to material. That's why we are looking into the research and development of the material as well. And another potential uh, direction we are looking is also the space. Uh, my co-founder Ali, he is uh, very, um, very uh, passionate about the space and has been involved in projects there. He's our concept developer. Actually, he has been contributed tremendously to the uh, to developing the the uh, concept of uh, concepts we are working and organizations it, itself. And um, he uh, also has uh, some visions and concepts for moving uh, some of our development in the space potentially. But we also really want to contribute to um, solve some of the problems which are facing on the earth and actually working in both ways, developments that could be for the space, could also to solve some problem on earth. So it's quite exciting, quite demanding, I would say, of course, uh, as any startup or any uh, uh, project in this scale has a lot of challenges, but also a lot of uh, rewards when uh, you see progress and you see the potential of really making impact and creating something innovative and and uh, something uh, interesting and new. So um, that's, uh, that's basically, I would be very happy if anyone is interested to learn more or has some ideas for collaborations or anything uh, to get in touch and I would be love to share more or, or uh, speak about uh, potential collaborations. Fantastic, Teddy. Uh, it, it's amazing to hear so many projects that you have got lined up and, and these are, 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 I would term it projects for the future because you know it, it's a real game changer in terms of uh, what you're planning to do here, what, what you have set out to do with InnoP as well. I, I'm just looking at all these projects that you have just mentioned. How many people are there in your team? Yeah, so at the moment we so we have the uh, we are the three co-founders. Uh, uh, Ali is our concept developer, but he was also contributing others, of course, as any startup. Uh, Shashki is uh, our communication manager, but she has been involved. Actually, she is running now uh, the project uh, project uh, with the Oslo municipality, and she she is an uh, experienced lecturer from the uh, University of Oslo, and uh, she also has a tremendous experience when it comes to communication and uh, uh, also administration organization. So we've been even discussing that she can uh, take the CEO position as I have other areas where I, I I have to put a little bit more um, energy at the moment. So it's, we are three co-founders uh, and we also have uh, architecture, um, which is based in Peru, actually. We are international, uh, even we are based in Oslo, but we have an uh, international team and we have also um, uh, advisor who is uh, supporting us for uh, applications, forms and for uh, getting uh, funding for uh, our development as well. Um, we are also have have uh, some ex uh, additional like advisors and mentors, and we've been in communication with other architectures, so like external uh, contributors and uh, stakeholders as well, which has been involved in the process uh, of developing, of course, and working on this uh, project. So yeah, that's uh, basically at the moment our team, but we are of course, uh, the scale that we are working, especially for Domus Futuro, we will need uh, uh, more uh, team members and expanding. So we are in communication now with some people and uh, potential uh, uh, team members. And if anyone is interested and has some skills that could be beneficial, we are very inclusive and we would really like to actually to bring experience from different countries as well, from uh, 
for us, diversity is really important. So we will be also happy to hear from anyone who may feel like has the skills and could, uh, could join such a, such a project. I would say most of your projects are actually now centered around Oslo and, and Norway, but mm -hmm. of course you, you, you mentioned Peru uh, earlier as well. Any plans to expand that to Asia? Uh, actually, I had a conversation with a person in Bali and um, about plastic waste there and uh, potentially bringing our solutions to uh, there. And uh, yeah, we definitely, we, we had actually in the process of concept development, we had some thought for some of the solutions we are looking into implementing in other continents as well. And uh, of course, we, we would love to, uh, to expand and to, to bring these solutions in other areas. We haven't had you know, already set, let's say, um, cooperation or potential partnership or a project uh, in this area in Asia. But there was initial discussion regarding Bali and why not uh, take Malaysia as well in the, in the future. So, yeah, we are very open to, to uh, we look into the growth generally. Of course, we start from Norway and that's the idea to develop their solutions, the products, and then expand it to the rest of the world. Because Norway has the potential, it has a really great environment for mm -hmm. developing sustainable, innovative solutions. And then, of course, the best is that you bring these solutions in, a, in other areas as well. Nice, nice. Now, m moving on to your other role in Sue Magazine. Uh, how, how did that come about? Yes, it's, um, it's a very interesting project and I'm also quite passionate about it at the moment. I've actually spent a lot of uh, uh, energy at the, the moment on developing. Uh, um, so a couple of months ago, I I met uh, Chi, one of uh, my co-founders, and we spoke about uh, creating impact and that we both uh, want to bring uh, more awareness on topics related to sustainability. So we had a couple of conversations, and then um, it, it since that we had similar visions uh, on, and that we want to go in the same direction with uh, um, with uh, creating uh, impact. So uh, we we decided to uh, create a, a magazine, a media that will help to educate people, bring more awareness on these topics, which we believe are very important. And um, and we also met our uh, other co-founders in Eva, which also has. Uh, had a really uh, huge impact on growing the, uh, the the project and moving forward. As uh, at the moment, actually, when we started, I was quite busy with Inupi and our project in Oslo. And then Cineva joined. She was kind of with Cineva. They start driving a lot and uh, moving forward. And uh, uh, yeah, the idea was uh, because we see how. At least when we join like a uh, clubhouse event or in the sustainability circus, we we speak and we see how how less information is out there when it comes to all these topics which are so important and the mainstream media not always unfortunately cover this news, this um, these topics and also um, there is a lot of greenwashing happening. So we would like to create a platform that will bring awareness and really um, bring the, the messages and hopefully create almost like a movement of uh, changing the mindset of people understanding how important sustainability it is. So we, we started just a couple of months ago on the 22nd of April with the, with the official pre-launch in Clubhouse. And now we are working actively on uh, on the official launch in Austin, um, during which we will have the first edition of our awareness magazine, uh, Sustainability Awareness. And then um, on the second, uh, after that, we are planning also to have first edition of Sustainable Luxury Living. And um, it started actually initially with, with the magazine, but with the time, the, the concept also developed on, now we're planning to have live interviews uh, with some uh, influential and experts 
of influential people when it comes to sustainability and also uh, experts in the area. We have, of course, uh, Clubhouse uh, and also Sustainability Club where we organize uh, weekly events. And um, we're planning also to, to host events as well where we can really bring these topics and also help people to connect and to uh, to create this space for informing, but also for collaboration and uh, um, connecting uh, people that are like-minded. <coughs> I'm sorry, I was a bit sick <laughs> previous week and still it's a bit uh, recovering, but um, yeah, my apologies for the coffee. It's okay. Well, so. F fantastic there's, there's so many things that's going on and and we have not even touched on to the third thing that you are really involved in which is women uh in tech oslo uh i i did hear you mention about um it being a movement where you are hoping to bridge the gap the 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 gender equality gap in especially women in tech how is that going and and what's the end game at the end of the day yeah, so um, I joined the organization Women in Tech Oslo uh, three years ago. And at first, I was really interested in technology. So my background is in business administration and PR. Um, but I've been quite interested in technologies and innovation. So I was joining a lot of uh, events uh, uh, related to that. Uh, I had uh, projects with VR, VR, AR, and AIR. That um, fields which I'm quite quite interested in. and um, I was joining a lot of events and also I was in a hackathon event and I just noticed that most of the time I was the only woman or uh, we were just two let's say three <laughs> and um, I uh, just uh, start to think how how little or how important it is that we have more women in the uh, in the tech industry and I joined the organization I joined first one event I really liked the the um, the organization itself and also the the content that uh, the work that they were doing so I joined first the event and I joined the, the team afterwards during the conference and um, it's quite exciting and I'm actually very passionate at the moment and uh, I was even considering to do some research, but of course now I'm busy with the magazine, so I will not have the time. But uh, I personally think that it's it's really important if we talk about sustainable future, and it's it's really important that we try to lower this gender gap because, um, especially in some areas, uh, it's it's really huge when you see the numbers. Uh, in Norway, it's I think it's 23 percent, but what is okay but there are some other places in Europe is 19 percent from other places in the world is even worse so when you see um, these numbers and when you also think how important tech and the tech industries are becoming for our future we all see that the tech companies are the ones which are really expanding growing and almost defining the future mm -hmm. of humans it's it's really important uh, that we we bring more more women in this field and more women in every level from the tech skills to management to decision makers um, I believe that so that's extremely important and we should all think about it and contribute so that's why I uh, I joined the organization actually at first also to to get to know more about the different tech industries but then I, I really uh, got um, um, I took the mission of the organization, like my own mission. And then I joined also Women Tech uh, Network, uh, which is a global organization as ambassador um, during the conference. And uh, um, yeah, I've been looking into other organizations as well where I could contribute and support this, this process because as I mentioned, I think it's, it's really important. So when I have the, the time and availability, I really love to to um, to work in this direction and to to be part of, of this process. I think it's now it's it's becoming what really gives a hope and at least in Norway there is a quite good attention to that and uh, uh, focus on really uh, bringing more women. But of course, it's it's a very complex. Uh, um, it requires work in many different directions from 
working with girls from young age and uh, defining what are the uh, core uh, roots of the issues why we don't have so many women in tech. So it has a lot of work that needs to be done, but um, I'm really happy that there, there is a lot of things that already are happening in this direction, a lot of progress. So I'm excited to be part of this uh, process somehow. And regarding Women in Tech also, we are, uh, as I mentioned, no profit organization. And uh, we used to organize hands-on workshops when uh, the situation uh, allow us. At the moment, we have more like digital events, of course, and uh, a community that we try to support through the process of entering and grow in the tech industry. And we are also looking into other how to expand and how to bring even more impact. So we are uh, developing team of advisors and uh, yeah, tr looking into directions of uh, uh, expanding that will, will support the process of lowering the gender gap even more. Uh, on that front, Teddy, I, I think there's so many people that I can connect you with in Malaysia who would be interested to be involved in the work of, of getting more women and girls in, involved in tech. Uh, as, as you know, we, we, the government just released a, a My Digital Blueprint and, and you know, we, we are all talking about ways to, to increase productivity and, and getting people into digital transformation and, and things like that. I, I'm not going to go into details, mm -hmm. but I, I think getting more women and girls involved would, would also be one of the, the key catalysts in, in, in terms of uh, making sure that this blueprint uh, is, is a successful one. And, and someone like you would be, be a real amazing role model for, for the young girls here in Malaysia to, to, to try to aspire and, 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 and be at least half as, as successful as you. And, and you know, so many, so many people I'm, I'm sure would be, be happy to, to host you in, in virtual events in the coming uh, future. And, and, and I would love to connect you with, with, with all of them, Teddy. Having, having said that, uh, I, I think you gave a very good explanation of, of what Inop does, uh, you know, your, your work and your involvement and in, in a lot of other things as well, uh, especially tech related. Now, in, in your area of work, what do you think the general awareness is, uh, you know, to, towards your kind of work, uh, be it in, in Norway itself or, or within the European region? How are you uh, you know, taking in all this, are, are they well equipped with the information of, of what sustainability is, what circular economy is, or, or do you think they are very far behind, um, needs to have more education? What, what would that be? Yeah, I, I can share definitely when it comes to Norway. Generally, I think Europe has a quite good focus on sustainability. Of course, some country more some less. Uh, and now, especially hearing and through Clubhouse and other events, the experience from other countries, I think in Europe, it has a good good focus on developing in this uh, direction. Some countries are making really great uh, progress and uh, um, in some of the areas. Especially, uh, when we talk about Norway, um, I think definitely it's probably one of the countries in the world where it has a quite uh, good attention to, to sustainability and uh, people really, really care about that and uh, care about the nature first, to protect the nature. And also um, there is a lot of support from the government, I would say even from the private sector, a lot of uh, uh, effort uh, to develop a more sustainable um, system. We know, I'm not sure if it's a uh, um, uh, that's a known fact in Malaysia, but you know, it's in first place when it comes to uh, electric cars. So most of the cars, is, many cars when you see it, it's electric cars. But of course, in, in any other directions as well, um, sustainability is a big topic at the moment, definitely. And uh, of course, there is always work to be done and there is always uh, progress. So um, uh, there are some, when you look at the data of how circular actually Norway is at the moment, um, unfortunately, the data is not so um, 
positive in this uh, when you see the numbers, but definitely there is a lot of uh, work that is happening at the moment towards this direction. And uh, there is organizations which are uh, governmental organizations that are supporting a lot this uh, process. So I'm actually very happy and very grateful that uh, I end up in Norway <laughs> a couple of years ago. And uh, uh, I'm quite aligned with the mindset when it comes to um, to protecting the nature, respecting the nature, and also to um, I'm very happy to be part of this process uh, towards sustainability and innovation and tech development, but also tech that could contribute to um, solving the problems uh, which uh, we are facing as humans and our planet also. Um, so, yeah, I think no, I am happy to say that the topic of sustainability is a um, topic that is um, discussed a lot and there is a lot of work that is happening at the moment towards moving to more sustainable future. So um, we, that was also a reason we would like to uh, bring more awareness to the rest of the world uh, with, with the magazine and as I mentioned with TNT developing some solutions that could also contribute because Norway also has the ability, it has the financial uh, uh, ability to also support projects like this because you all know that sustainability requires also um, investment and also yeah. um, unfortunately switching to more sustainable lifestyle also could be quite costly at the moment, unfortunately. So I think in Norway, how is the system at the moment allows to, to happen development and allows this process to, to happen quite fast. So it will be great to bring this experience and development in other countries where the situation, the economical situation doesn't, uh, doesn't allow. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what uh, uh, I could say about sustainability and, uh, and Norway and uh, Europe. You, you answered one of the questions I already had uh, along the way. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to, you to share in terms of sustainability. People always hear that word and they associate it to being a very expensive thing to do. And, and you briefly mentioned earlier that, you know, at this current point in time to, to lead a sustainable kind of a lifestyle, it, it is uh, quite costly to, to, to do so. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that the major stumbling block, especially in Malaysia is of course, um, lack of awareness is obviously one of the, the, the main thing, lack of uh, education in terms of what sustainability is, is obviously the other thing. Uh, but I think a lot of people also look at the factor of, of it being costly as, as the other stumbling block in terms of adopting a more sustainable kind of a lifestyle. But, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, P will come up with solutions to, to make it more accessible to, to everyone globally. And, and, you know, hopefully we will, the, the generations to come, I, I don't think it will be in my generation, but the generations to come will, will reap the rewards of, of, of us, uh, you know, re repairing this damage that we have already done to Mother Earth. Yeah. Uh, we've got two questions. From the chat box and and I, I just like to read out the first one to to you teddy if you don't mind uh, this yeah. is from julia besides mm -hmm. using recycling materials in construction how can we build a more sustainable city with smart architecture solutions yeah um great question thank you so much julia so it's really um looking into sustainable solutions of the materials, not just recycle, but also materials which are virgin materials, which have less carbon print. I've seen some developments which are quite impressive. Actually, I saw a person in Clubhouse and hopefully I will have the time to have a meeting in the future with Spock. It's about some kind of material that actually absorbs uh, uh, CO2 uh, and lower, uh, contributes to lowering the carbon print. So materials like this using in the construction and uh, in the um, buildings would be very, very beneficial. 
Um, another thing is also making the cities green, greener. So what we're working also the vertical gardens is another. I, I think it's uh, it's uh, something I'm happy to see that there are some great developments in happening. I heard about uh, in US and and in now in Germany on the 30th we have an event I was invited to join. Uh, some people doing amazing work towards vertical farming and vertical gardens. So basically making the cities greener with uh, with um, um, more uh, plants that will again uh, contribute to uh, reducing the uh, carbon prints and also to um, solving partly uh, the problem with the, the climate change and the temperature raising of the temperature. Another thing is also of course when it comes to mobility, electric mobility is another very important um, topic, I think, or uh, direction that needs a lot of work. Uh, so minimizing to cars, or use of cars and uh, uh, bicycles with uh, 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 faster fuels and use more electric uh, um, cars uh, is also very supportive to uh, make the cities more sustainable. And uh, also use of less cars, I would say, infrastructure that allows people to use bicycles and other uh, walking mm -hmm. uh, as well, uh, supporting, <laughs> uh, providing infrastructure is also very, um, could be beneficial. And uh, electricity, if we have more sun solar panels, could also contribute a lot. And generally creating infrastructure that make, make it, because when we talk about sustainability, it's of course environment, but it's also, um, it's also about the social aspect and, uh, uh, also economical aspects. So thinking in a direction that would make the cities um, more equal in a way or accessible any any point of the city to be, to have everything needed, more green areas in every point of the parks and playgrounds that will support the kids. And yeah, there is a lot that could be done. I hope this answered the question. And if Julia wants to take the conversation outside uh, here, I would be. I would love to 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 bring even more information if she's interested. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, we've got another question here from uh, <laughs> the International Malaysia Charity Organization (IMCO). Uh, it says here in rural areas, the idea of modern architecture is still very foreign. In what ways can we educate them in terms of sustainable architecture? I'm sorry, could you? Rep I just don't didn't hear well the connection. Yeah. Seems sometimes okay. Let me just repeat that again. In yeah. rural areas, the idea of modern architecture is still very foreign. In what ways can we educate them in terms of sustainable architecture? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I, well, great question. Thank you so much. Well, I think it's again bringing awareness and also showing the positive impact because, um, of course, uh, this requires effort and requires probably some additional costs uh, to switching to more sustainable, uh, uh, innovative uh, architecture and design. But um, um, if we we show the the positive sides and how important it is, and bring the educational aspect, which I think it's really really important for uh, this uh, switch to more sustainable future and also changing the mindset, showing what would be the benefits of having that another thing because when we want to switch the mindset and to make people understand how important it is, they have to see what will be the benefits for having a more sustainable uh, architecture. Uh, so, yeah, showing, uh, educating and uh, showing successful examples as well. And uh, I think it's, 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 a, it's a first step that could, uh, and of course then bringing um, some experiences from another places. I'm really happy now with these digitalizations and different platforms like Clubhouse and events like this that we can really connect to each other 
and show what in one city has been developed in one area, not one part of the world, showing it to another part and how this can be incorporated and bring this experience to another area. So, of course, might have some challenges when it comes to cost, and but it could still could be uh, find a way how to incorporate uh, uh, this uh, development. So. Yeah, that's uh, basically. I hope that was uh, answer the question. Wonderful, wonderful. So, Teddy, at the end of the day, what what would you? How do you get more involved in your area of work? You know, I like. How, I I guess what would be your top advice for for a a, a young boy or a girl who who wants to get into the kind of work that you do? Yeah, the thing is really to get out there, to not be afraid. And because um, there are a lot of challenges and I've been facing a lot of challenges and a lot of, um, how to say, stereotypes that I had to break sometimes. And especially as women entering some of the industries or both, of course, as well. It's uh, uh, But... Uh, the important thing is uh, really to believe uh, in yourself and to believe in your vision, in what you want to achieve, and to work towards this direction and to also to do research and to learn to see what is happening out there and to get out there, to meet people, to connect. Uh, that will help very much to, to achieve, uh, I think, most of the things in life, actually, because we can't achieve things alone. We have to connect and we have to collaborate. We have to um, to work together. So I, I things which I'm, I'm showing that they, I haven't achieved them alone, it will be through collaboration and amazing people that I met on my way. So it's really important. And also to not give up and always there is a way when you wish to achieve something when you dream of something, there is always a way and you just have to find it. Sometimes think out of the box and if you face a challenge, just think that is a, is a, is a moment and after this moment will come better moment when we will we'll bring you close to, to your dreams and the, the place where you want to be. But, um, and also not uh, allow um, people or you will see a lot of skepticism I meet almost every day and uh, um, just have to armor yourself with the belief and to, that you are, you know what is best and to go in this direction and you will, uh, you will achieve anything is possible, I believe. So just believe in yourself and uh, surround yourself with good people. So that's very, very important. Yes. Uh, important that you have to have a good um, uh, environment uh, and you should always surround yourself with people that you can learn from something and not worry that maybe you are not good enough yet or you, you learn every day and improve. And uh, if you have uh, people that are successful around you, this will support a lot your, your own success as well. Any parting thoughts, Teddy? What what's next for Inopi? I I know you've mentioned a little bit uh, mm -hmm. team expansion because there's more projects coming on board. Uh, we we spoke about uh, you know Asia. You you did mention about uh, a a possible collaboration in Bali. Anything for Malaysia? <laughs> Well, we are open to if anyone is interested to um, have an idea and wants to learn more, just to get in touch. And I would love to share and to explore the. And maybe now, as I know you, Andrew, and uh, um, somehow I have I I joined this event and I actually met. Uh, I was in a conference, uh, world conference uh, against corruption, a couple of years ago in Kenya. And uh, I was joining there uh, 
performing actually I had a concert and I, I met wonderful people from Malaysia so um, I'm also happy to, to join this event and to meet you and um, yeah basically uh, regarding Inopi uh, next step is uh, developing of uh, we are now uh, working as I mentioned on Domus Kulturo which is the um, urban agriculture development and the next step is uh, also uh, the uh, Domus Futura, the project, um, and uh, some more research and development, and then also we uh, we are planning to have meetings with the uh, um, accelerator that works with the space. Uh, so yeah, there is a lot of exciting things coming, and um, uh, if anyone from Malaysia or other place in the world wants to have an idea, we will be happy to uh, explore to speak and um, yeah, discuss the possibility of partnership or cooperation. I truly believe in connecting and cooperating. That's so important, especially when we want to build more sustainable future. It's, uh, I think this is the key and we all have to uh, like transform the, I don't believe in, in uh, um, competition. And like there is actually a book how uh, Co cooperation and cooperation is a new uh, approach uh, that replaced uh, competition. Very interesting book, and uh, I truly believe in that. And uh, yeah, I I will be interested if anyone wants to to speak about potential Great. projects. Teddy, very quickly and very briefly. Run us through all your clubhouse rooms and clubs, and and perhaps people who are interested who are listening in now can can join in and and follow you guys on 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 clubhouse. Yeah, sure. Um, so we have Soul Sustainability Club. My name in Clubhouse is Teddy Slavchova. I was uh, uh, it's the same name actually everywhere. Um, and uh, then we have Soul Sustainability club yeah, is called this is the official club of soul magazine we have at the moment two weekly rooms one is sustainability project and initiative which is on wednesdays and it's going quite well with uh, a lot of uh, uh, great people joining and sharing about events about projects and uh, different initiatives and they also we try to create a space where people can really connect and uh, cooperate and it has been really great when I see people saying oh I can I can call you uh, we contact you outside and we can discuss in this and that so that's one room and another on Fridays we have sustainability news uh, during which we are sharing um, uh, about uh, latest updates and news happening around the world in the area of sustainability and we usually have really great actually on both rooms, uh, ex experts in the area of sustainability and uh, influencers from, I would say, from Clubhouse that also have their own clubs. So it helps to people joining to also follow these people and to connect with, with the community, really. And I'm also uh, one of the founders of Sustainability Leadership Club, uh, which also uh, hosts networking rooms and great uh, rooms related to entrepreneurship and sustainability and other great topics. So if you see on my profile and look down, you will see both clubs actually. They are on first and on fourth place. That's uh, that um, area where ways to, to discover uh, our work and our rooms in Clubhouse. Amazing, Teddy. And, and with that, I thank you so much for your time. Thank you for spending your afternoon, your, your lovely afternoon there with us. Uh, from Melbourne this morning to back to Malaysia and then back when we went to Cyprus, we are now flying off to Tampa, Florida to speak to the next speaker. And, and it's just amazing that how uh, borderless the world is today and, and we are all connected. And, and I love the way you, you mentioned how collaboration is, is the new way forward. And, and I do hope that we get to do more things with, with you with Inopi, with, whether it's with uh, Women in Tech Oslo or, and, and everything else that you are involved in. And once again, Teddy, thank you so much for spending your time with us. It was lovely speaking with you and I bid you farewell and uh, stay safe and take care. Yeah, thank you so much, Andrew. 
And thank you for the invitation. It was really lovely to, to join the event. And uh, it's really great to see that you organized uh, such a wonderful event. Really looking forward to future events and your work generally at UFAO. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for creating such a space and uh, uh, bringing these important topics out there, contributing to <laughs> making uh, yeah more sustainable uh, future. Thank you so much. I will let the team know, Teddy. I'm, I'm sure the team will be happy to hear whatever you have just uh, said uh, to me and I'll pass on the message. Thank you so much, Teddy. I'll see you Thank then. You. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.